I'm Everett, welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time we're continuing with the uh, reassembly of the Alba 1A shaper. Last time we got some of the screws made for holding the bearing housings to the side of the main body. Uh, we also got the bull gear assembled and in the machine. This time we need to make a couple special fasteners. Uh, one is for a uh, retainer for a, a detent spring and the other is a lock nut to hold the detent retainer uh, screw in place. Now one thing I want to mention before we get into working on the shaper again is uh, a friend of, uh, well, new friend of mine, I guess. Uh, he's a mutual friend of uh, Jim Deadman from Saw Logs Blastic Hubs and uh, Tom Knopp from Hilltop Machine Works, and um, he's become a friend of mine as well. Uh, Michael Hale, he's finally gotten his uh, little YouTube channel started the other day. He's got one of those smithy machines. That, it's got the combination of the lathe and then the mill, and uh, he really likes it because it saves a lot of space in his shop. I haven't seen as many people use the smithies on the YouTube channels. So it would be, I'm, I'm just curious as how they work. Some of the tips and tricks and things that you need to, for using them. Uh, a good friend of mine actually has one uh, elsewhere in the province here. I didn't give it a try last time I was at his place, but at some point I might just, you know, try it on him and see how it, uh, see how it works and how it cuts. So yeah, his name's Michael Hale. I'll put the uh, link to his channel on the description below and uh, go have a look, see what you think. Otherwise, let's get back to the shaper and keep putting this thing together. So what we need to do is this thread pitch, uh, or make this thread pitch, but a grub screw style. Something similar to this. Uh, this is off another part of the machine. I can't really pilfer it. Uh, I'm not going to put the hex in the end because I don't have equipment for that. However, what I can do is I'm going to make it a flathead, which will be plenty enough to hold that detent spring in place. 500, so otherwise known as 12.7 millimeters, of course, uh, 434 inches versus 10, well, 11 millimeters, so 433, 434 is what we're looking for. Need to take off 65 thousandths. Four thirty-eight, four thirty-seven, close enough. Time for a chamfer. Just truing it up. Yeah, that way it's square to the square to the chuck. If it's square to the chuck. It's square to the job. Because we just turn the chuck or turn the job in the chuck, right? And this is ninety degrees to your work. Now, I don't actually have a nut to spin on here to test, so we may even do the last pass using a threading die in a die stock. Well, it's making a nice scratch. And we have, yeah, that's 14 TPI. On we go. Let's take a few thou pass. You know, that's actually looking pretty good. That's got to be close. There you go. Like I say, I'm not too proud to do a finishing pass with a die. I just don't trust these dies to cut a full thread 
without, and especially in 4140 like this, without getting erect. Our hacksaw, because I am not feeling like parting this off and breaking another blade tonight. Alright, last little step here is we'll clean up this end and then we're going to cut a nice uh, slot into it, like the other ones. Alright, so that handles that. You just have to put a slot in the one end so we can use a screwdriver and then this part's done. And like before, if uh, 80 thousandths was good enough for the depth on those other ones, let's go 80 on these. That'll work. I just used a piece, a couple pieces of aluminum, sandwiched them in there, and uh, there we go. Now, in order to make the locking nut for that um, set or that adjustment screw for the detents, um, again, I have to make a nut. And in retrospect, I probably should have made the nut before I made the grub screw. Oh well, life goes on. Um, now. The head of the bolt here, it says 3 8 Whitworth on the wrench, but it's actually the 7 16 Whitworth thread here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of 1 inch round uh, stock, because this is just some cold roll I had kicking around, nice short chunk. And we're going to use a new toy that I recently acquired. Uh, finally got around to getting a, an ER40 hex collet block. I don't have a collet set yet. Um, these were on clearance at uh, one of the local tool suppliers a while back, some weird assorted sizes. And I managed to pick up four or five of them in various sizes. I think, yeah, one inch was one of the ones they had. So this is going to be a nice use, first use of this tool. Because we're going to make our, we're going to cut our flats first, cut it off, then mount it up in the lathe, and then um, drill and tap the, uh, drill and tap the center. I'm just going to start by using this to hold it. There we go. Now we're going to set it on the side and let it rest on the ridge of the hex. We're going to use the back of the collar or the back of the locking nut as our stop. Now I'm just going to take a nice slow pass here using the Y axis. And I realize 145 thou may be a bit much to ask. So there we have one hex that will work for what we need to do. All right, well, seeing as we're doing a 7 16 Whitworth, uh, Whitworth uh, course, it'll be 7 16 14. Check the uh, Zeus chart here that uh, David gave me. And it says recommended tapping drill is 9.25 millimeters or 0.3642 inches. 
Let's see what there is in letter drills. It's close. 358, it's three, 368, letter U. I just have to be careful next to the chuck to avoid any sort of unauthorized chuck modification, chuck job modifications. Face it, drill it and tap it. Then we finally have enough parts to start the next stage of reassembly. Yeah, I'm just gonna chamfer that on the edges with a file afterward. All right, time to center drill. Jedi Master says and uh, chamfer before threading. I know I don't claim to be anything more than perhaps Padawan at this point. Perhaps Dark Jedi Apprentice, but that's really stretching it. Now, I am not brave enough to try power tapping this. Not with a carbon steel tap. A little bit of the threading motion lotion. Yeah, I'm not really feeling comfortable with the idea of power tapping with a carbon tap, carbon steel tap. All right. Hey, hey, I like it. As I say, I'll take the uh, sharp edges off these corners of the file just to make it sort of match the profiles of the rest of the uh, rest of the nuts. Uh, this side, I'll just quickly deburr, and uh, we have our lock nut. So we at least have enough parts to move on to the next stage of assembly. Uh, which is get the uh, shafts and the uh, bearing housings into the machine and we have our two extra bearing housing screws not screws we've got our retainer screw for our detent spring we have our lock nut for our retainer screw let's put all this together so we can take our gear selector rod as they call it in the manual I'm looking down this hole to make sure I see the little divot in the shaft where the ball rides. The ball in, put that in. Now this, uh, this retainer screw here doesn't have to be super, super tight. It just has to have, there we go. There we go. I kind of like that. That should work. Oh, that's a little too tight. You can adjust the tension on your detent using this. Yeah, that's that feels about right. I can always do a fine adjust later once it's on the machine. We'll take our lock nut and there we go. We're snug. I like that. The little shift collar will have to go in after uh, as we're as we're assembling the machine. The thing is, I have a number of parts here I need to clean yet. I'm going to wire wheel uh, with the soft wire wheel the uh, gear teeth because I can see some rust pit, uh, uh, starting on the surface a little bit. Again, I don't think this machine was used much in the last number of years. So get that cleaned up, get it degreased, then lubed, and then we'll start reassembly. So I took a little bit of time, uh, degreased some of the parts, uh, took the gears themselves to a brass wire wheel, cleaned them up, uh, got the grunge and stuff off and the surface rust. Um, what we'll do now is because inside the machine it's really hard to see, uh, I'll do what I can as it's coming together for you to see how it does. But what I figured I'd do is I would uh, mock it up on the bench here first. And then um, once it's together, just to, we'll go through the, the gear train and, you know, so you see what the different parts do. And then I'll put it in the machine.
part of why I wanted to set it up on the bench here was to try to remember how this went back together to make it easier for me to put back in the machine. Um, it's, <laughs> it's been apart for a few weeks. So in a nutshell, what we have here is this is the input shaft. The big pulley has a cone or a tapered surface on the inside, cone shaped, that this is the cone clutch. And you see the uh, splines there? They line up with the splines on this end. A uh, big spring uh, helps keep it compressed and held together. Except where this bolt goes through and bolts on, the end of that bolt there actually pushes on a little rod that's inside there. Now this little rod in here, just watch the screwdriver, if I take the clutch engagement lever and push, one way it pushes the, it, there's a little camming mechanism in here, you may have seen it as it went back together. That's what engages and disengages the clutch. That disengages it, that engages it. With the clutch engaged, we have this shaft turning. And what that does is that provides power right now we're in the low range in the uh, gear selector here. That provides power to uh, this uh, cluster here which slides back and forth. Right now we're detented and stuck in the low position so that as it turns we have a small gear driving a big gear then another small gear which will drive the bull, the bull gear. When we, oh seriously? And we pull on our gear shift Normally it would be pulling this, but I don't have the bolt tight here. It pulls our cluster to the other side. And now we don't have as big, we have a bigger gear than that one. And it's driving a smaller gear here versus this ratio. So this is the high range as far as the gearing. In the original setup on these machines, there was also another way of going high and low as far as range. And that was with the motor pulleys. Uh, the motor had a two-step pulley and the... Uh, driven pulley, the, the one up top, it also has an inner and an outer pulley, both of which are different uh, diameters. So that would give you another, uh, another way of changing speeds. Seriously? The motor I got only has a single pulley on it, and it's, it's been replaced at one point. I'm going to run it with two speed, just the two speeds in the gearbox for now. Uh, if I find down the road, I mean, I'm debating whether at some point to put a three phase with a VFD. We'll see how it goes. But I want to get this thing running basically first, and then I'll add some accessories later. But yeah, that's basically how the gear train works in this thing. I'll try to get a decent view inside the unit as it's going together, so you can see how it goes together. Um, but again, it's an enclosed space, so we'll see how, we'll see what happens. I'll try. So near as I can tell, the easiest way to install this is. I assembled the uh, gear train into the left side uh, uh, bearing housing itself. All the uh, bearing surfaces got a li little coat of white grease just for just for startup. And this will go in this hole. And we'll get all these screws started, but they won't be tight yet, because what I want to do is I want to get the other side housing in place first, then snug it down, because we have a couple bores that need to line up both sides. One of the fun things is it's just fun to see how the bull gear and everything matches up right now. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited to see this thing come together. It's been a few weeks. So, and for the screws, I'm going to pretty much uh, snug in the back off a half a turn. That allows a little bit of movement. Yeah, little man sitting in his uh, bike trailer again today playing with his toys.
Yep, he's still working on mastering language. I'm looking forward to when I can actually discuss things with him and find out exactly what he needs. I realize it's a double-edged sword because I know a number of parents who say once they start talking, it's a downhill slide, but honestly I'd rather hear what he has to say and have less arguing. So this is part of the reason why the painted components that were going on only got one coat is I've already got a few dings in this thing just from assembling parts to it. So this is the right side bearing housing and it goes in over this side. Now this uh, rod goes through the hole there. I got to make sure that I get my shafts lined up and you're not going to be able to see it on the inside but this little fork here has to go in place and oh thankfully I'm skinny enough to I can get my arm in there and now just a matter of lining up the hole in the shaft there we go so we've got the hole in the selector shaft lined up now we just need to line up the the shaft here I may have, oh, there we go. I wasn't sure if I had it backwards. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, there we go. Oh, I didn't realize I missed the green paint on the end of that little stub shaft. Shows me for not looking that close. I'll scrape it off afterward. So anything I've been assembling here has had if it's a hole, the tap's gone through it. If it's a fastener, there's been a die run over the threads. So, there we go. Should now be able to snug everything up. And back over here. We can now give these guys a snug. Now that everything's lined up. Surprised me they'd use flathead fasteners, but well, I guess they're engineers. So the fun thing is, watch this bull gear inside. If you can see it. So after I snugged up the screws there, I went to spin it over and found that um, it was interfering and binding and making all sorts of growly noises, even just turning it by hand on the shaft here. I realized that when I snugged it down, I didn't really check or adjust for any sort of backlash. So what I did was I loosened off all 10 screws um, and then I took a well piece of paper here. This is heavy uh, copy paper. and. Uh, uh, like well, actually, it's more of a medium weight. Double, it's doubled it up and then rolled rolled it into the gears with the uh, between the bull gear and the back gear. I did that with the screws loose, then tightened up the screws again. Now she runs quite nicely. I mean, we have dry gears, no grease. The case is open, so I mean, yeah, you're going to hear a little bit of a gear clatter. Now, one more thing I have to do inside here is I have to snug up that little bronze fork that uh, moves the cluster back and forth on the uh, speed selector. So that I'm not even be able to try showing you just the angle of it. So I'm going to reach in there, contort myself in, snug it down, and then we'll move on to the next step. So here we have our pulley with the center bearings to allow the pulley to spin freely on this uh, stub here. So the inner ace sits here. It stays stationary, outer race rolls with the pulley. Now, inside here is a uh, tapered surface. And uh, that taper meshes with the taper on this piece here. And as they come together, they grab, and that's our clutch. Um, both surfaces are going to get a really good degreasing. So you, I'll admit that's got a bit of weight to it. Not stupid heavy, but a bit of weight. 
Come on. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to get in your way. Come on. It actually slid right off. It wasn't a problem getting off. There we go. There we go. There. Boink. There's our pulley. <sighs> yeah, that's got a bit of weight to it. A bit of mass too. Very interesting. It seems to be seems to be slightly out of balance as well. Go figure. So remember this rod. That's our clutch actuation rod. In there. So what we've done is we put a little bit of white grease on the splines there for this clutch cone to match those splines and then it'll go on. Now the clutch wasn't working on it when I got it. He just flipped the switch on to let it slide back and forth a couple times. Probably shouldn't have done that either, but um, it didn't seem to be feeling right. Now I'm looking in here and I see a straight hole there and a threaded hole there. And I just checked the, the uh, parts uh, diagram and it's showing something called a uh, locating screw. There's a slot right here and that's that to be my guess would be where that would uh, probably engage with that. So it looks like we have to make another part. <coughs> okay, seeing as we were missing that part, the little locating screw, what I did was I just took a piece of quarter inch round 1018 and because uh, it's a quarter inch hole here, and then I just made the little uh, locating screw. It slides through, screws into the other side, quarter 20 British Whitworth, a little flathead on it, and we should be good to go. So I have the clutch handle released on this side. We should be able to slide this on like so. Yeah, good. Now before I do that, I'm going to re-degrease this simply because of the fact that I've been handling it. There. There we go. Now I just, the thing about this is I also threaded just enough of that rod that when it reaches the other side and is flush on both sides that the uh, screw actually snugs up against the tapered snugs up against the tapered portion of the thread where the uh, threading die was tapered. This little spring is what provides well the spring and collar is what provides the tension to keep that cone clutch engaged. position. There we are. There we are. There. Clutch disengaged. Clutch engaged. And there we go. Freewheeling. Clutch is engaged. Freewheel. Engaged. I'm just trying to figure out what that clicking noise is because it didn't sound right, but it's actually the actuator rod inside. Yeah, that's no problem. It's just that little uh, clutch actuator rod that goes inside this shaft. It's just sitting in there tapping back and forth. Put a little tension on it with the, uh, with the lever and it goes away. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm just, I am happy to get this far for now. That's cool. At least now it's finally starting to come together. Parts are starting to disappear off my bench. And, uh, you know, like I say, I'd rather put this back together, you know, functionally properly, even if I have to make new parts. So. So I think we're going to have to call this video at this point. Um, 
Again, I'm trying to keep them from going too long, uh, but still put them in logical chunks and not cut one off halfway through an operation. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, that's fine too. Thanks for coming by. Um, thanks for the likes and all the comments and stuff. I appreciate hearing from you all. And uh, we'll see you next time.